Welcome to Newsline. It's Friday, April 15th, 8 a.m. in Tokyo. I'm Catherine Kobayashi. At the crippled nuclear power plant in Fukushima, operators are making their utmost efforts to regain control of the cooling system. However, highly radioactive water that has accumulated in the facility is hampering their work. The work to restore the cooling function has been hampered by highly radioactive water at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. On Thursday, TEPCO found that concentration levels of radioactive materials increased in underground water in number one and number two reactors. It was newly found that concentration of radioactive materials in underground water collected in a facility called subdrain pit had increased. On Wednesday, according to the survey conducted by TEPCO, concentration of radioactive iodine-131 went up compared to a week ago by about six times to 400 becquerel per cc, and cesium-134 by about 38 times to 53 becquerels per cc at number one reactor. At number two reactor, concentration level of radioactive iodine-131 increased from a week ago by about 17 times to 610 becquerels per cc, and cesium-134 by 8 times to 7.9 becquerels per cc. The highly contaminated water built up in underground tunnel might have spread into this facility. The subdrain pits of the number one and number two reactors are connected by a pipe. TEPCO said that highly radioactive water at Unit 2 may be leaking into the underground water, so it will increase the frequency of measurements to three times a week for better monitoring. The disposal of tainted water is a pressing issue. Some water in the tunnel outside the building has been transferred to a condenser in Unit 2, and the water level fell once by 8 centimeters. However, by 6 p.m. yesterday, the water level went back up by 7.5 centimeters. The plan is to transfer water from the condenser into the waste processing facility, but the work is slowed down because it is taking a long time to make sure that there is no water leaks and the company still doesn't know when the transfer of water in the other units may be started. As of Thursday the 14th, we installed tanks for 1,000 tons of water at the plant locations. TEPCO has installed temporary tanks for 1,000 tons by yesterday to transfer tainted water. But it will take until the end of May before the company can install tanks for all of 27,000 tons. The outlook is still vague as to when the cooling functions can be restored. It's been a little over a month since a powerful tsunami hit the Fukushima Daiichi power plant, triggering Japan's current nuclear crisis. Let's now take a look at measures that have or haven't been taken to prevent nuclear plants from being damaged by tsunami. Fukushima Daiichi started operating in 1971. It's one of the oldest plants in Japan. Since 1966, the number of nuclear reactors here has increased to 54. Their total capacity is 49 gigawatts. Japan generates the third largest amount of nuclear power in the world after the United States and France. All the nuclear power plants across the country are located on the coast. This is because they need a lot of water to cool down steam, which is generated in a reactor and used to turn a turbine. Japan is one of the most earthquake-prone countries. Its Fire and Disaster Management Agency says between 1896 and 1993, Seven earthquakes and resulting tsunami killed more than 100 people. On average, tsunami caused heavy damage in Japan every 15 years. So there was an awareness that power plants needed to take preventive measures. The threat at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is now at the highest level on the international scale. But along the rest of the Pacific coast, other facilities were left relatively unscathed by the giant waves. The 14-meter wall of water engulfed Fukushima Daiichi on March 11th. It was 2.5 times higher than the plant's design specifications. This shows the extent of the damage after the disaster. Circled in red are the locations of the pumps that are supposed to bring in seawater to cool the plant's reactors. 
the monster wave destroyed the pumps because they weren't protected. The loss of these pumps triggered the nuclear crisis. But at the Tokai Daini plant in Ibaraki Prefecture, some 110 kilometers south, the outcome was completely different. The plant was hit by a wave higher than five meters, but its cooling system was preserved thanks to a structural feature, a nearly six meter high protective wall built around the pumps. The yellow line on this picture shows the location of the three pumps. The giant wave flooded the surrounding area. The protective wall was built following a simulation in 2007. The scenario was based on a tsunami that hit the region some 330 years ago. The red area over the ocean represents a wave more than four meters high. The simulation suggested there was a possibility the plant could be hit by a tsunami exceeding the 4.9 meter design specifications. That prompted experts to upgrade the specifications to 5.7 meters. Fortunately, the two pumps managed to cool down the reactors. We were relieved. The Onagawa plant in Miyagi Prefecture also survived a direct hit of a 13-meter tsunami. Its cooling systems were in a building 14 meters above sea level. At the Fukushima Daini plant, 10 kilometers south of Fukushima Daiichi, critical infrastructure is enclosed within the stronger reactor buildings. The absence of well-defined national safety standards has led to a variety of designs for Japan's nuclear plants. Just as we were preparing a review of safety measures against tsunami, we were hit by a nearly unprecedented wave. Moving forward, we need to seriously reconsider our safety measures regarding nuclear power plants. Earlier, Michio Kijima spoke with Junko Noda, who's covering the nuclear crisis. Junko, why is there no clear national safety standard to deal with tsunami in the first place? Until now, the emphasis was placed on the threat posed by earthquakes rather than tsunami. Four years ago, a tremor damaged the nuclear power plant in Niigata Prefecture and a small amount of radioactive material leaked. This accident prompted power companies to strengthen safety measures against an earthquake. But as for tsunami countermeasures, the Fukushima Daiichi accident proved the current standards are not strong enough. Although Japan has dealt with tsunami for many years, monster waves had never disabled a nuclear power plant before March 11th. People in the nuclear industry thought it was not realistic to design a plant based on a remote possibility. Now, after this accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, what are Japan's other nuclear plants going to do to prevent damage by tsunami? NHK has learned from its survey that all 50 nuclear power stations nationwide, excluding the two quake hit plants in Fukushima, have taken new measures against tsunami. For example, at Hamaoka plant in Shizuoka Prefecture, Chuba Electric Power Company is going to build a 15-meter wall to protect the facility. NHK has also learned 90% of the plants have decided to introduce new emergency power generators, including mobile generators. Some utilities have already conducted simulations for cooling procedures based on a scenario in which emergency generators have failed to work. Initial reaction was also confused at Fukushima Daiichi, wasn't it? Right. After the cooling system no longer worked, gas in southern reactors was released and seawater was pumped in. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency admitted these measures didn't happen soon enough but it isn't yet clear why the decision was made so late and who is to blame. Tokyo Electric Power Company, the agency and the Prime Minister's office should clarify the situation and their responsibility.